Uh, so the next couple of presenters following on Stuart, and thank you Stuart, um, are going to talk to you about studies that have not yet been released. So you, they're, they're close, they're on the horizon, but you're getting a sneak preview tonight. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to, maybe reintroduce you uh, to Ian Kelso. Um, most of you may know Ian or remember Ian as the head of Interactive Ontario. He's gone national now. He's with the CIA. Um, it is <laughs> at that CIA. The, we're not, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Ian is now heading up the Canadian Interactive Alliance. Uh, and as you can see, he's, I keep looking up there, but the slides are right here. Uh, he's going to talk to you about a study uh, that they're close to releasing, I think, New Directions in Financing uh, for the Interactive Industry, which is obviously critically important and which we can all learn a little something from. So over to Ian. Uh, thank you so much, Karen. I haven't really gone very far, have I? Uh, <laughs> and it's true, I do work for the CIA now. But, uh, so there's not much I can tell you tonight, or else I'd have to kill you. Let's see, does this work? Yes. Uh, so um, first of all, I'm going to reiterate a theme that I think that we've had tonight so far, uh, which is definitely a thank you to uh, the leadership that the OMDC does show in supporting research. And, and now that I sit at the national level, I know more than ever that you know, it is truly a leader in the country for, for supporting you know, what is extremely necessary, especially in an industry like ours that is seemingly changing and morphing by the hour, by the minute, uh, to really understand uh, what some of our challenges and what some of our opportunities are. So, so uh, you know, really big thanks for the OMDC for uh, really valuing that, I think, uh, and really recognizing the importance of, of research. So uh, a little bit about who is the CIA, you ask? Um, well, the Canadian CIA uh, is the interactive voice uh, for, or sorry, the voice for interactive digital media, and we are interactive sometimes, too. Um, we represent seven regional trade organizations, seven provincial trade organizations, uh, including Ontario, Quebec, British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Prince Edward Island. And uh, in total, we represent an industry that is over uh, uh, 3,200 companies. And uh, this is old research, actually, so we haven't done the, this sort of bigger survey of the industry in a few years. And uh, so that number, I'm sure, is much bigger right now. Um, but we hope to do that research very, very soon, and uh, I think we've got an application in right now. Um, uh, I'll give you a little snapshot about who we are in Ontario. Uh, as you can see, in terms of the size of companies, we are mostly weighted on the, the very small company. Uh, on under five is uh, over 70%. And um, so it, it's, a, it's an industry that's very much driven by the, the super small SME. Um, in terms of the split of uh, what types of uh, activities that those companies are doing, um, as you can see, there's two, you know, sort of bigger weights in terms of uh, uh, bigger slices of pie there, uh, cross-platform, um, people that are working more than one medium, and generally one of those media is a tr so-called traditional media. I guess I got to be careful using that word here, do I? Is that not insulting anybody? Um, Cross-platform, generally broadcasting is a primary driver for, for those, but uh, certainly uh, in the last few years we've seen a lot more happening uh, in music and magazines and, 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 and other media. Uh, games is the other big one, uh, and games is, is one that's fast growing, as you'll see in a second. Um, when I was at Interactive Ontario not so long ago, uh, this is sort of the, the latest numbers in the growth of our own membership, just to kind of show you, you know, what the swing up has been from uh, when I started back in 2002 there, uh, we had, I think, 30 companies in our membership. So uh, when I left, it was about 330. Uh, so a very, very fast-growing industry and one that's, that's constantly changing and morphing. Um, in terms of generating you know, economic activity, uh, the Canadian industry in total is worth about $4 billion. Uh, it's over 50,000 jobs. Again, that, these numbers are a little bit old, so uh, probably more around 60,000, but we'll find out soon, I hope. Um, and uh, in Ontario, there's about $2 billion of, of revenue. Uh, so that this province is quite a heavyweight in terms of overall in, in the interactive media industry in terms of the revenue it's generating. Uh, the workforce in Canada in the games industry alone is uh, 16,000 people right now. So that, that one little chunk represents uh, 16,000 workers. Uh, and to give you a comparison in our, our, 
our neighbors to the south uh, right now, there is uh, 32,000 people working in the U.S. games industry. So, uh, you know, we're 10% 10, 10 of the population. Uh, we're five times bigger than them per capita. So uh, we are truly a, a games industry that is thriving and growing all the time. Um, and the growth rate right now is about plus or minus 20% in, in that industry. So, um, um, you know, it's an industry that's been very much driven by tax credits, a theme here tonight, another theme. Uh, in Ontario, of course, it's a 35 to 40 percent tax credit. There are tax credits in most of the provinces across Canada, not all of them, um, but, uh, but Ontario's is definitely one of the best tax credits that is out there, and uh, uh, it's been that way for the last at least four or five years. And uh, other great tools like the IDM Fund, which uh, um, we know is sunsetting right now, but we, we hope to see uh, something like that back again. So you're asking, what the heck is the problem? We're doing so well. Um, well, all those numbers that you saw up there were really represent, representing a lot of activity by a lot of the really big companies, especially in the games industry. You know, it, it's really the big multinational companies. And a lot of the programs like tax credits, you know, are really emphasizing money that you get after you actually spend the money. Um, so cash flow is, is really what the major problem is. And we set out to say, as a national organization, what can we examine, uh, what should we look at in terms of what's a big challenge for the industry? Funny enough, people said money. And I, I said, what? You, you got to be kidding. Uh, so when we looked at the money, we said, you know, where, you know, what is it about money that, uh, you know, what is the problem we really need to solve? Uh, we decided, let's do a study to see, you know, what is it, what, is, what are the gaps right now in industry capitalization? in project financing, in corporate financing. But we did know, we were pretty sure that, that cash flow was going to be one of the big issues. Uh, you know, the, the Canada Media Fund uh, has been, a, you know, a bit of a godsend in terms of uh, introducing some early stage capital to the industry, but it's not everything. Um, so our mandate for the study was to uh, assess the effectiveness of uh, the mechanisms that were supporting the sector. Uh, and, and take a focus on what's happening in the private sector. Where are those guys? The second one was to identify potential new vehicles of interest to the, uh, to the OMDC and to, to other funders. Uh, we had multiple funders in this project, but uh, the OMDC, again, was the leader as the, the sole sort of regional funder. And so we've taken a specific focus on Ontario companies and, 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 and done a lot of case studies around it. Uh, when we kind of looked at the matrix for, you know, where are people getting their money for their projects, you can see, you know, it is a very broad mix and, um, you know, it goes well beyond sort of, you know, public sector financing. There's a lot of self-generated um, investment that's happening. A lot of people that are, uh, you know, uh, getting friends and family and rich uncles and, and, you know, mortgaging their houses. And so there's a lot of skin in the game from companies right now. Um, there's a little bit of debt financing. There's a little bit of, of equity financing from uh, third-party investors, from uh, retail, uh, from uh, angels, VCs, um, and seed capital financiers, and uh, and then there are you know the public sector mechanisms. Um, what we know that uh, you know from an emerging industry with most companies being those micro SMEs, um, a lot of them are self-publishing. A lot of the industry you know is. Uh, is shifting and changing just like everybody else's industry. The, the traditional channels uh, in, in games have changed dramatically in the last five years. You know, games were you know, made mostly in a retail distribution uh, play up until uh, the introduction of the iPhone and the App Store. Um, but now, you know, funny enough, I guess, you know, the games industry is one of the last ones to kind of go, oh my god, digital distribution, what's going to happen? Um, <laughs> And it's, you know, it sent an industry that was, you know, was much more or less always like maybe the music and, and, and the, uh, the video industry uh, sort of sending it a little bit to a tailspin because now it's, it's the little guys that have adapted very well towards using those new channels and, and new digital distribution channels to, uh, uh, to be able to leverage and uh, to sell their products. And, and then there's a lot of free stuff out there that you're competing with. Um, and when you try to finance something and you don't have a publisher, you don't have someone who's financing your product and guaranteeing it to market, where do you get the cash up front? So um, the opportunity 
for this industry, you know, is I think obviously quite huge right across the board from games to cross platform media and entertainment. You know, Canada is an amazing place to make content for interactive. You know, Ontario is one of the top places in this country. You know, and I don't just say that because I used to, you know, be the person who was evangelizing about Ontario. Ontario is truly a leader in providing great tool sets and an amazing environment for making content. Um, but there are missing pieces of the puzzle. And so um, our competition is really, and I think we have to focus on, you know, our, our competition is really Hollywood. It's really Silicon Valley. You know, it's really the rest of the world. It's kind of like a, a CA versus CA. It's Canada versus California in a way. You know, there's so much happening in Cal down in California. Our industries are about the same size between California and Canada and, and in the game sector. So, you know, we have to look at them and we have to say, how do we take those guys on? And really, you know, that missing piece of the puzzle, you know, uh, is very much the private sector money that, you know, doesn't exist as an industry up here that exists very much as an industry down in California, um, both in the entertainment industries as well as in the technology-based industries, both so Silicon Valley and, and Hollywood. Um, we haven't been around quite long enough to create you know, what they have down there, which has become a virtuous cycle of prosperity. And that virtuous cycle basically comes from, you know, the talent that goes in, the money that follows the talent, the success that comes from the success, the sort of, sort of entrepreneurs that become successful that, you know, when they cash out, reinvest back into that economy. Uh, and, you know, it goes around. Talent follows money, follows talent, follows money. And, you know, you become the go-to place to, you know, make whatever it is you're making, whether it's the technology, the entertainment. The good thing is, you know, the, I think the good message and good news is that Canada has kind of gotten a little bit of that reputation right now. We have been a net magnet for talent. I just came back from London, the UK, and uh, funny enough, they just got a tax credit there. They've been trying to get one for a long, long time, and they've been pointing to Canada and saying, We've got this big problem. We've got this huge brain drain to Canada. And so people want to come here and they want to make stuff. But if we're going to make stuff and we're going to, you know, we've got to keep the money going. We've got to keep making sure that we aren't just, you know, making factories for uh, companies that are, uh, you know, coming from the outside to, you know, use our programs to, you know, generate new product to get it out there because it's cheaper to make. You know, we got to make sure that the spin-off that comes out of that, the talent that's there, says, hey, wait a minute, I want to make my own content. I want to make my own stuff and that there are the tools that are there to get them started. So at that very early stage, you know, it's really critical to, um, to make sure that the, the, you know, there is the access to capital. So, um, so the key findings, and, and I'll, I'll leave, I'll sort of leave it off to you to, to you know, go through each of the ones uh, and drill down on them when the report does come out very, very shortly. Once we pick the font, <laughs> it'll be out shortly. But, but it's, uh, you know, we've got to get the font right. Um, but the big message that's coming out, out of this report is that, that you know, the area that if we concentrate on creating those tools for early stage and seed capital, if we help to enable those entrepreneurs, those people that are coming out of some of the bigger companies, those you know, really passionate and enthusiastic creators who have uh, uh, have a view of the world that you know they can they they are the, the best and that they can make the best in the world that you know this will cr fill out the ecosystem. Whoops! And I, I hit a button that just turned it off. Oh no! What do I do? Yeah. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> So at the end of the day, all this money that we're pouring into the multinationals to make all this product, you know, we need to grow that other side where we have our own intellectual property, where we own our intellectual property here, and you know, where we have both sides of the ecosystem. We have a div some great diversity, and that's going to give us the longevity, and that's going to, you know, that's going to justify the big investments. And that we're very pleased that the the province provinces of Ontario and and, and a few other jurisdictions that I won't name uh, in this country, you know, pour in. That at the end of the day, we can have, I truly believe that we can have the best industry in interactive media of anywhere in the world. 
and uh, and that can happen in, in not too quick of time, not too short of a time. So, uh, with that, I'll say thank you very much. Thank you for your uh, attention and your patience. And uh, back to you. Thank you.